In one day, the enemy smashed through the defenses of the American First Army on a 45-mile front and was biting deep into Luxembourg and Belgium. In 24 hours, the initiative changed hands and the German army, which had put the word Blitzkrieg into all languages, unleashed its desperate offensive. They had picked a time when the weather prevented us from using the air weapon, the weapon in which we decisively outweigh them. being shown for the first time. It was captured from a German cameraman. He had taken it so that the German home front might gloat over the evidence of the success of Rundstedt's attack. In August, it was German convoys that were caught like this along the French roads. Now it was our convoys, ruined, burning where they'd been overrun. The sweat and iron of Detroit and Pittsburgh came the wreckage of Malmedy and Saint-Vite. We lost more than jeeps and half-tracks, tires and shells, tanks and guns. We lost men, 78,000 in dead, wounded and missing. Unarmed and defenseless American prisoners, comrades of these men, fell to the machine guns of our enemies. Weeks later, their frozen bodies, hands and ankles bound, were found where they fell. These Belgian enemies of the Third Reich, too, were unarmed and defenseless. May it please the court, approximately 18 months ago, the Battle of the Bulge was in its final phases, and the Allied world was once again sensing that victory was within its grasp. At about the same time, the horrors of warfare with a ruthless enemy were made known to the American people by the release of the news of the Malmody Massacre. They were shocked as only a peace-loving people can be shocked. Almost simultaneously came the announcement by the War Department that the perpetrators of that infamous crime would be brought to justice. Today, after seven weeks of trial, the alleged perpetrators of this massacre, together with their comrades, the alleged perpetrators of other murders during the battle, are rapidly approaching that moment when they stand before you at the bar of justice awaiting your findings. At that same instant, the War Department will have fulfilled its pledge to the American people. This duty, which has been placed upon you as judges in this case, is not a pleasant one. It is not one to be sought after, as the responsibilities that go with what you do here are far-reaching, and your decision will live long after all of us here today have passed on. 
you will be creating new law, new precedents, and you will determine to what extent those who conduct military operations in all echelons of command are responsible for the acts of troops whose excesses are unrestrained by orders or the efforts of such commanders.